Hello again everybody, this is John with BestPriceNutrition.com. Today I am here to review Agmatine. Um, it's an ingredient I get a lot of questions on because everyone wants to get that pump. Um, Agmatine is actually a really, really interesting compound. Um, it's decarboxylated arginine. It's a biogenic amine and it plays a lot of roles within the body and it's ubiquitous throughout the body. Um, so I'm going to go through just some of those roles I'm going to touch on them, but the main focus will be here on the nitric oxide portion because I know that's the main part that uh, most of you are interested in. So specifically, it's a neurotransmitter, it's an antioxidant, um, it has secretagogue properties, I'm sorry, um, is, it can modulate insulin release, um, glucose metabolism, stimulate adrenaline, nor, noradrenaline secretion, it plays an important role in urea genesis, um, but it, the most of the potential actually seems to be in pain relief and neuroprotection specifically within the brain. That's where some really, really interesting research is on it. Um, and it was really only identified in mammals in the 90s, so it's relatively new compound. Of course, it's been around for a while, but in terms of the identification of it, um, it's, like I said, it's a bioregulator of a ton of cell functions, cell growth, cell division, a lot of stuff. So going through the research, there was a lot of stuff. It was almost overwhelming to some degree. Um, and what we're really going to focus on, like I said, is the nitric oxide portion of it. There's actually two mechanisms by which it can modulate nitric oxide production. Now, if you read marketing literature, the main thing that they focus on is that it's you know, going to give you a perpetual pump as opposed to some acute pump which then drops back down from homeostatic mechanisms from the body. In other words, you know, something like arginine is purported to dilate blood vessels, but then quickly your body can counteract that by inhibiting arginase, um, er, by producing arginase, which is going to inhibit arginine production and uh, consequently nitric oxide production, so it's going to um, inhibit your body from dilating blood vessels beyond some point where you're going to get this perpetual pump, so to speak. So that's kind of where the marketing lingo goes. Now the question is, what about in practice? Well, the reality is in terms of human studies with, you know, supplementing agmatine for the purpose of increasing nitric oxide in athletes or otherwise healthy adults, there really isn't much at all. There isn't any, actually. Um, so the mechanisms of it are not fully understood. As I said, the mechanisms are twofold. And what's interesting is if you do take it with arginine, it's going to inhibit some of that neuroprotective um, properties that I had talked about due to the uh, blocking of the uh, NOS enzymes. Um, so I don't know it's specifically NNOS, it's a nitric oxide synthase enzyme, that's the one that's going to be responsible for those effects. So arginine actually has an antagonistic effect on that. Um, now taking it with arginine and citrulline for nitric oxide purposes, now that's the next question, and that's where it kind of gets interesting. It may actually have an antagonistic effect there as well because we're talking about a different NOS enzyme here. I won't get into the details of it, but you know, from the blood pressure regulating effects, the question is, does it help increase nitric oxide production? And I said, as I said, it can go both ways actually. It may, but it also may have the opposite effect. So that one is what I mean. We really don't know. So a lot of people anecdotally report, hey, I take it with citrulline and you know, I take agmatine pre-workout, I take two grams of this, six grams of citrulline. I get this crazy pump, but that is not grounded in any evidence. It's more this because of that after the fact, um, you know, and that it's kind of a logical fallacy to, to think like that. And I'm not denying that people feel that. The question is, what is the causal relationship of that? And to date, we don't know because, like I said, the, the mechanism isn't fully understood in terms of how it would elevate nitric oxide levels beyond some, uh, you know, reasonable level where the body would counteract it. Um, so that's really where the questions come into play. I'd like to see more research in that regards. Now, in terms of sources of it, um, it's in a lot of foods, specifically fermented foods, beer, wine, sauerkraut. Um, it's also found in some protein-rich foods such as fish, beef, eggs. Um, and another cool thing about it, actually, interesting fact, is things such as agmatine and other polyamines is they're indicators of the freshness of fish and meat because they are fermented from bacteria. So sometimes if fish or meat has been um, sitting for a while, um, some of the functional groups that are a part of these polyamines can affect food storage. So as they see more and more of that, it may indicate that it's not as fresh as we think. So that's just an interesting little aside. Um, how to use it if you do decide to use it is about one to two and a half grams a day. That's the recommended dose. Now, again, there needs to be more research to kind of establish a, a better dose and also to see these effects from supplementing with it um, on a greater level. As I said, a lot of it is coming from food because the endogenous production of it seems to be limited from what we know. Now, one key note here is don't take it with Yohimbi because um, the interesting thing is they're going to have 
you know, Hemby is actually going to deactivate the alpha-2 adrenergic receptor to allow fat burning. That's why you take Yohimbi, and if you take Yohimbi, take an empty stomach. This does the opposite, actually. It activates that receptor, um, which actually may be one of the mechanisms of action for how it then goes and raises nitric oxide levels. Um, so don't take it with Yohimbi. Also, you may, uh, would want to avoid taking it with protein-rich foods <clears throat> due to arginine sharing a transporter with it. Um, that, that's another reason, you know, not to take it with a, a protein-rich foods source, so any of your meats, protein powders, whatever, don't take them together um, based on what we know today. Um, other effects, questions that come up, you yeah, don't really see too much else. Like I said, it's, it's, it's almost, you know, it's one of those things that can go either way. As I was talking about some of these mechanisms with um, nitric oxide production is that it may very well be, you know, giving people all these pumps, but it may not be because we don't know because of the evidence. Like I said, there's two proposed mechanisms, mechanisms of it, and one of the mechanisms where it, it, whereby it would um, increase it may actually be have an antagonistic effect because of those NOS enzymes and the deactivation of them um, that may actually cause it to not work and may actually make your arginine and what have you not work as good. So that's something to consider. So, you know, I, I'd like to see more research on it from that standpoint to validate these effects. Um, and as always, you know, the body has mechanisms to control blood pressure, dilation, constriction of blood vessels along with blood volume. So I'd be curious to see what that would come out to be. So um, if you guys have any questions, feel free to post them in the comment section of the video or blog. I'll post some of the research below the video as well so you can check it out. Um, as I said, there's a lot, a lot to go through. So um, not enough on humans though, oddly enough, and not for the purpose of nitric oxide production. In my opinion, based on the criteria that I would personally apply. Um, that being said, it's pretty cheap, so if you wanted to, you know, take it, that's fine, because, you know, your friends are telling you they're getting pumped out of their minds and stuff, but uh, maybe one time do a little experiment with your friend and switch his Agma team maybe with vitamin C and see if he comes back and tells you if he's pumped. We'll see. Um, just kidding. Or you can't do that. Um, also, um, if you like the video, you can like it below. Uh, I appreciate it if you do. And you can check us out at facebook.com slash bestpricenutrition. Thank you for watching.